so excited to be here in Falling Water and see all of you face to face, finally. We are gathered in this magical and spiritual place that is considered one of the best, if not the best architecture piece of the 20th century. This place fits well the forum's uh, name, Architecture, Culture, and Spirituality. So big thanks to the organizing committee, especially to Julio Bermudez. Please give them a hand. <laughs> this spiritual place evokes the awe feeling that is described by the poet Kent Yasuda as a moment of embracing nature. Following these feelings, some argue that falling water can be considered as sacred architecture. Indeed, Frank Lloyd Wright believed that all his architecture is sacred. However, the dictionaries and literature define sacred architecture as related to faith and therefore a religious structure. That brought me to ask the question of what makes a building sacred? Two school of thought examine the complex question of what makes a building sacred. First, the theological theory that stem from comparative religions and believe that a presence of the divine in a space make it sacred. As Mirka Eliades claims, and I quote, the sacred is preeminently the real, a wholly other reality which does not belong to this world, even though it is manifest in, in and through it." End of quote. Comparative religions examines the perception of the universe, its central core and perfection, and its common element that built it, faith, uh, earth, water, air, and fire, that already appear in the story of the creation in Genesis 1. The research also looks at the universe order and geometry, and its horizontal and vertical elements. In addition, the characteristics element of the sacred, it, its rites passage from the profane to the sacred, creating a place set apart of spiritual transformation and transcendence. This separation also appears in the Bible. Frank Lloyd Wright addressed this concept in his work on nature, its order, geometry, and rhythm, as the representation of the universe since, and I quote him, nature is all the body of God we are ever going to see, end of quote. The other school of thought addressing the sacred is based on theological aesthetics, where beauty originates in the divine. Thus, everything that relates to God is contributing to the sacredness, not necessarily only his presence. This theory also includes the relation to art and the core as possessing the sacred aura. He reacted to the notion of Ralph Adams Crump's theological aesthetics from 1924 that considered the Gothic cathedral as the ultimate sacred beauty. Wright considered God and man as one, and thus he asked, why the steeples of the little church why point to heaven? Why not then build the temple, not for God in that way, but a temple for men? As you can see in this sketch of his Unity Temple from 1906 against the Gothic Revival Church. This idea demonstrates right design concept of democracy and freedom, where, and I quote him, the worshiper is the center of the spiritual space, which should express the free men, end of quote. These ideas influence right design concept of expressing American values and its landscape. Frank Lloyd Wright designed more than 30 houses of worship for various faiths in different locations in the U.S. Only 10 were built and are continuously used for worship and most of them are listed on the National Register of Historic Places and on the American Institute of Architects AIA Best Buildings list. Wright considered himself a deeply religious man coming from a Unitarian family with a long line of ministers extending back to the days of the Reformation in England. Though his faith in the traditional sense was Unitarian and he was influenced by their theological philosophy, he believed in nature, 
for him, nature was the Bible. And he often said that nature is his church and that we should approach nature with a capital N as we approach mm -hmm. God. With the belief that nature is the representation of the universe, Wright utilized the four universal fundamental elements of earth, water, fire, and air in his use of geometry and natural light to enhance the sacredness of his designs. Following the theological studies and to decipher the design principles underlying Frank Lloyd Wright's religious project, I have applied my conceptual model of sacred architecture onto Wright's sacred architecture. This model analyzes the relations between faith, form, and building technology. It shows how faith commonalities and specific requirements directly influence the sacred form, this is number one, and its ambience, number two, which are the juxtaposition of the physical and spiritual realms and represent the multifaceted sacred experience of the worshiper, number three. The physical elements of the structure are the sacred path, plan, and vertical elements, while the ambience represent the intangible parts such as the holy light, divine music or silence, and thermal comfort. Recently, I have added sacred water as the focus of my forthcoming new editing, edited volume. These features are also part of building technology, which includes material, system, and method. The model shows the mutual relation between form and building technology, number four. It is acceptable that, uh, <clears throat> that form directs the selection of building technology. However, often building technology serves as the major factor determining the built form. As Wright declared, and I quote, the forms were sculptured from materials according to the nature of construction and the life of the time. Thus, the relation of form, its ambience, and building technology are interdependent, number four and number five. Furthermore, they all are impacted by the context of time and environmental conditions, number six and number six A. Illustrating how this model applied on Frank Lloyd Wright's sacred architecture and what can we learn from it reveals Wright's major design concept nature, thus his environmental conscious design that relates to the context block of the conceptual model. This concept was part of his idea that design with nature can be considered a stewardship to God. While the design should express American values of democracy and freedom. The second principle is the separation from the mundane, which is one of the commonalities across faith and is reflected in my model as the sacred path. The third concept is the American value of freedom and democracy, which is expressed in rights, form, and ambience that departed from European church design traditions and focused on a human-centric scale. The last point in rights holistic design approach, where the whole is the equilibrium of its part, including abstracting face symbols to be integrated into the whole. This is derived from the inter interdependence of form, ambience, and building technology features shown in my conceptual model. Frank Lloyd Wright demonstrated the relations of faith, form, and ambience in all his built and unbuilt projects. He departed from European traditions of church design. His buildings are designed in human scale, open and lit, using pure geometry based on a module and grid that enhances his holistic design approach, utilizing the notion of the holy light and the divine music and abstracted faith symbol to create the sacred aura. Sorry. Although Wright practiced this design concept in all his projects, he acknowledged, and I quote him, we have different religions, each seeking its own relation with, with the divine. And it's why we seek different styles in church architecture." End of quote. Wright de departed from European tradition of church design, such as Gothic revival, and turned to ancient civilization and Japanese architecture as his inspiration. He claimed that their religious monuments exhibit 
their understanding of faith and how it impacts form and their relation to nature, and their use of simple and pure geometry. Unity Temple in Oak Park, Illinois, was studied extensively and has become the example in illustrating Wright's design resembles to ancient sacred monuments. Most of the scholars show the resemblance of Unity Temple to a couple of 17th country, century Gongen-style Japanese temple with its three parts based on a six-foot grid, which is the Japanese mat called tatami. Other claim that the temple's organization and its monumentality is similar to pre-Columbian temples, such as the plans of the temples in Arroyo Group, Milta. It is stated that this resembles may be coincidence, or that it may be considered as the confirmation of pre-Columbian influence on Wright's design style. Wright himself compared his design of the base of Unity Temple to the stalobate of ancient Greek temples, such as the Parthenon in Greece, following the same ratio to length and width, length of length to width, nine to four, and the hexa style of the columns. He also turned to the Oriental East and adopted the Japanese concept of a house being a temple. This 1949 proposed residence in Wisconsin for Father Harry John Jr. that includes a chapel illustrate right approach to design the house as a sacred place. Please note that he departed from the European tradition even when he was designing for a stricter religion like Catholicism. Historic Byzantine domical churches inspired Wright's design of the Greek Orthodox Church in Wisconsin. He abstracted the face symbols such as their square cross, the saint depictions in the window, the special screen in the sanctuary that he designed, and the gilded interior of the shallow dome that resembled the gilded mosaic by Byzantic churches. These examples demonstrate how his design opened a dialogue between West and East traditions similar to Byzantine architecture served in history. In all of his houses of worship, Wright understood the common notion across faith of separation of the sacred from the mundane. He designed a pilgrimage journey from the secular to the sacred, preparing the worshiper to enter the spiritual realm. Please note the red arrow on the slide that makes the beginning of the, such a journey. In Unity Temple, he designed such a journey with a prolonged path that includes some threshold before entering the sanctuary. Number one is the path uh, from this, the number one is the path from the street toward the entrance. Number two is the first threshold where you go up six stairs to enter number three, the courtyard where you stop again to turn toward the entrance doors. Here, number four is another threshold before the entrance where you get, can get in the mindset with the engraved sign for worship of God and for the service of men. Once in the foyer, number five, you stop again. Here, you can go straight to the back courtyard, to the right to the Unity Temple House for community activities, or go up the stairs, number six, to enter the sanctuary, which Pastor Jonathan described as simple and beautiful. When Wright was forced to create a straightforward path, such as in this proposal for a wedding chapel in Berkeley, in Berkeley California, he proposed a bridge to serve as a link between the secular, in this case a hotel, and the sacred, the wedding chapel. To elevate the spiritual effect of the path, he suggested a fountain and vast vegetation under the bridge and the chapel. Again, nature surrounded the chapel. Wright 1936 design proposal for the memorial of the Soil Chapel in Wisconsin is a good example of the relation of his sacred architecture to nature and to the common universal sacred elements of earth, 
light as fire, and water that are the core of the theological comparative religion theory. The chapel is surrounded by nature, growing out of earth, not imposing on it. It includes horizontal um, lines parallel to earth. Its square shape, shape, which Wright called noble, represent a solid, permanent, and powerful image associated with earth. He used water as a threshold between the secular and the sacred, but also to refer, reflect light behind the choir. The sitting arrangement where congregates face each other is characteristic to the Unitarian houses of worship he designed, reminding Unity Temple of 1906, where the seating arrangement catered to the notion of unity, and I quote, unity of divinity central to Unitarian thought and the universalist view of the unity of humanity. End of quote. Unity Temple open space is novel, square, with only four columns supporting the roof. The entrance to the sanctuary is through doors that face the congregation while the exit doors are different and wider since right so the worshiper entering, entering as an individual but exiting as a community. Also the exit facing the pastor instead of the traditional way of walking with you back to the pastor. An example of right abstracting the cosmos horizontal and vertical axis is Annie Pfeiffer Chapel in Florida Southern Methodist Ch College from 1938. Like the memorial to the Soil Chapel in Wisconsin, these chapel's horizontal lines are also parallel to Earth, while the vertical axis create the axis mundi of the campus. The central location of the Annie Pfeiffer Chapel on the campus of Florida Southern College enhances the verticality of the chapel as it radiates the spiritual message of the Methodist Liberal Art College. This 1938 chapel became a symbol of Wright's interpretation of faith as a universal construct relating to nature, democracy, and freedom rather than following specific religious doctrines. It also illustrates the support of Wright's client, Dr. Spivey, the president of the college, who saw the opportunity for this chapel to exhibit the Methodist modern idea at the time. Please note the plan of the Annie Pfeiffer Chapel on the top of the slide. It is a symbol of a balance between the formal centralized and the longitudinal sacred plans with a tower rising above their intersection. This intersection departed from European traditions by creating a hexagon sanctuary. Frank Lloyd Wright design concept of freedom and democracy which he admired as one of the most important American value in the U.S. Constitution Amendment of Freedom of Religion. As such, when he was commissioned to design a synagogue for Beth Shalom congregation in Elking Parks, Pennsylvania in 1954, he attempted to build the American synagogue. In his design, he embedded the faith of Judaism into indigenous culture of the Native American tribes that used to live in the region by combining their art with the Jewish symbol of the menorah, the seven candle holders. In the case of Wright's 1947 Unitarian uh, Meeting House in Wisconsin, he departed from the tradition form and created a shape to express wings of a bird as he saw it, a symbol of freedom. Others interpreted it as hands folded in prayer, looking more into a concrete function of the house of, so of, of worship. Though the plan, see on the top corner of the slide, show how the design is based on a cross, expressing the relation of faith and form, Wright abstracted the traditional symbols and based the plan on a triangular module and grid which enhanced Wright's holistic design approach. The analysis of Wright's sacred form and ambience also reveals 
his, his holistic approach to design. This approach was not unique to his sacred architecture since he utilized this concept in all his projects. Under this concept, we observe two important set of relationships, form and function as one and truth and beauty as one. The first was unusual concept at the time when the design school of thought called for form follows function. The second idea of truth and beauty as one was explained before under the theological aesthetic theory. To achieve these unique ideas and express them as part of his holistic approach to design, Wright used the concept of continuity. This was expressed in all his religious projects by using the same grid and module at the exterior and interior of the house of worship. An example of a triangular module is the, demonstrated in the design of the first Christian church in Phoenix, Arizona. A design that Wright proposed in 1950 for a Southwest Christian seminary in Arizona and was realized only on the same site 23 three years later by his office to become the first Christian church. It is interesting to note that this continuity idea also dominated Wright's use of building technologies such as the selection of materials, exposing or hiding structural systems, and beautifying the building with light. As illustrated in the conceptual model, which I showed you before, the relation of form and its ambience create the spiritual experiences in a sacred space, while innovations in building technology accommodate the form or determine it. In the next few slides, I'll focus on right innovations in building technology, such as material, temporal comfort, acoustic, and light, which influence the form and the ambience. Early in his career, Wright studied the nature of materials and understood how to utilize them to enhance his sacred architecture. As Unity Temple's pastor wrote, and I quote him, the building is the harmonious unit, the style fitting the material and the material the form. This slide shows a historical photograph of the concrete construction of Unity Temple in 1906. It should be noted that Unity Temple was the first monolithic concrete poured on sites public building in the U.S. In the Pilgrim Congregation Church in Redding, California, from 1958, Wright used concrete and stone as the main exterior and interior material. This was an environmental conscious decision since the stone was quarried close to the church site and the walls were constructed by members of the congregation. Moreover, each member was asked to bring a special stone to be embedded in the wall, creating a feeling of belonging and enhancing the congregation's spirituality. Conducting digital energy simulations on right original design showed his environmental conscious design. In terms of today, this design, construction, the involvement of the congregation and the comfort level would have been considered as a sustainable design. Right understanding the nature of materials often became the grammar of his sacred form and impacted the sacred ambience. In Annie Pfeiffer Chapel in Florida, 6,000 concrete blocks with 48 patterns were poured on site uh, by students at the college and were made of stone, local sand, and seashells to be used at the bottom of the chapel. All these organic blocks include embedded square pieces of painted glass that, as you can see, dramatize the light effect in the lower floor of the chapel under the galleries. However, the blocks deteriorated because of the porous material they were made of. And this problem was accelerated when air conditioning was installed in the building and the chapel operable windows were sealed off. Condensation due to the different temperature in, in and out created mold on the, on the blocks and the water pushed out the painting, painted glass. A firm in Ohio was called to replicate those and the air conditioned thermostat was turned to be to a fixed temperature day and night 24-7, all year round, even when the college is closed for vacation. 
I use computerized energy simulation to compare the original thermal co conditions of right design with the current condition. I had recommended strategies of combining an efficient air conditioning system with passive system like reopen the windows when weather permits. The results show an improvement in energy performance and thermal comfort. When the congregation installed air condition units behind the choir screen and in the sound wells of Annie Pfeiffer's chapel, it contributed to the deterioration of Wright's original acoustic quality of the space, which was praised before. To overcome the problem, the congregation installed an audio system. The goal of preserving the architectural integrity by concealing the location of the air conditioned unit compromised with preserving the integrity of Wright's building technology of acoustic design, as well as with the location of the speakers hanging above the screen and blocking somewhat the skylight, which is the major source of light in the chapel. Wright lighting design was based on the use of multi-sources and effects of light. In addition to natural light, he designed all the light fixtures in his houses of worship. Wright evenly lit the sanctuary of Beth Shalom Synagogue in Elking Park, Pennsylvania, as required by Judaism. Using natural light coming from the pyramidal roof made of glass and plastic sheets. Its main chandelier, designed by Wright, is a triangle as a continuation of the triangular module of the synagogue. More so, Wright abstracted face symbols using specific colors. Their meaning are found in the Jewish mysticism, the Kabbalah. For example, blue is wisdom, green insight and understanding, yellow gold beauty, red strength, courage and justice. This design followed the myth that only through a series of colors may God reveal himself. This ties us back to the combination of the two theological theories that I have introduced to you before. Wright used the notion of a house of worship serving as a beacon of light already in 1940 in his design of the community church in Kansas City, Missouri. In this church, he proposed 8,000 watts flood lights, creating a steeple of light with 8,000 candle power. However, due to budget constraints, blackouts during World War II, trust issues with the client, and insufficient technology, Wright proposed for a proposal for a Christian metaphor of light was not realized. Still, they did build his proposal for perforated roof, which creates a special ambience of light and shadows in the sanctuary. It highlights the icon of the cross as the focal point of the sanctuary, different from the synagogue that is lit with equal light distribution as required by faith. In 1994, the artist Dale Elder and Roberta Ward designed a 1.2 billion candlelight beam and called it as a steeple of light and continued the idea of Frank Lloyd Wright. Unity Temple design, lighting design, is an example of Wright's holistic lighting design as a part of the whole building design and detail. In Unity Temple, he used natural light from the skylight that introduced soft, even light into the space through an amber glass and the upper windows on all sides of the space that are transparent and decorated with motifs of the prairie landscape like the concrete exterior columns. Unity Temple was the first public building in Chicago to use electrical light. Wright designed the lighting fixtures based on a square and a circle symbols of earth and heaven, and installed the maximum watt balls available of the time. However, his lighting design and technology available at the time left part of the temple too dark for reading. To overcome this functional lighting deficiency, larger watt bulbs replaced the original over time. Yet, the larger watt 
increase the heat and cause some of the original Wright's design of the light fixtures to deform. Therefore, new replicas of Wright's light fixtures has been installed. Although this solution solved the task lighting and demonstrate an attempt to maintain Wright's original fixture design, the space is much more lit and lost some of the original dramatic effect of the in interplay of light and shadow. This situation represents recent discussion of preservation and restoration of historic houses of worship that need an upgrade in their lighting system. In order to decipher right original lighting design in Unity Temple, I have conducted a digital light simulation and compared the results to the Illumination Engineering Society current standard for lighting in houses of worship. The results of the study show that Wright's intention was to create the spiritual and celebrated light as part of the ambience of the temple, highlighting the pulpit in a dramatic lighting design retaining the traditional aspect of the focal point of a Protestant church. There are so much more to discuss, but time is of constraint. Therefore, I summarize Frank Lloyd Wright's design concept that I have illustrated in this lecture with five pointers about what we learn from his sacred architecture. First, nature representing the environmental conscious design that we call today sustainable design. Second, the separation from the mundane, which we, he also practiced in his residential design. Third, the American value of democracy and freedom which was expressed in departing from European traditions and using symbolism to enhance this novel idea. Fourth, right holistic approach to design that he used in all his projects. And the fifth point is his innovations in design and building technology that today are considered as part of lead criteria. Learning from these design approaches is best demonstrated in a new addition to Wright's 1947 Unitarian Meeting House in Wisconsin by TKWA Architects in 2008. With sustained growth and ever-increasing facility use, the congregation turned to TKWA Architects to design an addition that would almost double the total size of the church. The new addition is lead gold, structure and was designed in line with Frank Lloyd Wright's environmental conscious design. It includes green roofs that harmonize the original church by Frank Lloyd Wright, the use of natural light, and the installation of geothermal system is in line with Wright's sustainable ideas. The design respects the, and highlights the original structure and follows Frank Lloyd Wright's famous quote from 1958. Architecture is not just building, it is living spirit that builds." End of quote. Marcel Brewer, a prominent architect of the 20th century modern architecture, described Wright's architecture and I quote him, "'What I value most in Frank Lloyd Wright's sense of imperial space. It is a liberating space to be experienced not only by your eye, but felt by your touch, dimensions and modulations corresponding to your steps and movement embracing landscape." End of quote. Finally, I leave you to imagine Wright's 1953 proposal for Kaufman Rodendon Chapel in Mill Run, Pennsylvania, standing on the premises of falling water. Thank you. <laughs>